I suppose you possibly all heard that story of the missionary who spent years and years and years overseas serving the Lord, lost some of his children, lost his wife, and finally he himself had to be pulled off the field practically by force, but he was just too old and too sick. Nothing but a worn out old man, no good for nothing. The only thing he could get for passage back to the States was to get on a barge. One section of it carried dignitaries and famous people and people traveling for tourism. The other part was like a, a sort of a stockyard where, where they'd carry cattle and horses and such. And the man, the only fare he could pay was to be in those rooms. And so he got in there with the cattle and made his way back. And as, he, as the boat pulled up, he noticed as he looked out one of the portholes there that he kept open because of the smell. He noticed that a red carpet was rolled out and, and dignitaries and, and movie stars and all such sort of people, or at that time people of the theater, were being brought down on that red carpet and being applauded, received as heroes, as great men. He walks off with the cattle, finds a little apartment in a seedy part of town, buys some porridge and some bread, goes to his room, cuts open the bread, it's a stick of butter, and the old man just couldn't take it anymore. He just began to weep. He said, Father, these people haven't served you. They mock you. They come home and a carpet is rolled out for them. The finest food is laid before them. I've lost my children. I've lost my wife. There's nothing left of me. And I come home and I have gray porridge in a tiny room having traveled abroad with cattle. And all of a sudden, that voice that you do not hear spoke to his heart and said, Son, you're not home. You're not home. I find it funny that missionaries kind of have to travel around almost ashamed. Kind of like going from one church to another, knowing that some churches like yours receive them well and count them as heroes. and Yet knowing when they go to other churches, they're just a bother. Oh gosh, another missionary video. Another slideshow. I've been at the place where you're up there giving the slideshow. People look at you like, oh gosh, we've got to sit through this. And yet every picture, that missionary, every picture, his heart breaks in two. You know, I used to come to the States because I was, I was a wild man. The Peruvians used to say, Brother Paul is not an American, he's a a Peruvian, because he's the only, only missionary here that's actually poorer than the Peruvians. And I lived razor edge. I lived there during the war. My life has been threatened. I've been followed through the jungle by terrorists. I've had a gun to my head five times. Gone without food. I've burned up with fever in the jungle. I've practically froze to death going across the Andes Mountains. And I used to come back and I would look at churches and I would get so angry. They want to take me to a mall. I'd go out into their parking lot and I'd go, goodness, look at this. I could, I could build a church with that car. Then I came back to the U.S. God called me back here and I've been here now for about six years, I guess, and I spend my time between South America and Europe and Africa preaching and teaching. And, and I've come to understand something. That the Christians in America aren't, aren't as dull as I are, just aren't as mean and careless and uncaring as I thought. But here is the problem. You lose your focus. Missions is just not plastered before your face. You know, these missionaries, that think, that's all they think about. 
But see, you, and, and you can't, I, I can't blame you because sometimes I fight the same battle now that you fight. But you just lose your focus. This is not, this is like Plato's cave. This is the shadow on the wall. All these things that you see in Detroit, all the things that God could care less about your World Series. It's not even reality to Him. You see, the things that are most important that you can see with your eyes, they're not important at all to God. They're not. I remember one time when the World Cup was going on, and, 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 and in World Cup in, in South America, everything shuts down. I mean, businesses shut down, everything. The World Cup's the biggest thing going. And I remember I was coming down, it was a Sunday night in a church that I planted. I was coming down to the first floor, and a little Indian woman by the name of Delia was going up to the third floor where the roof was. And in Peruvian homes, you, you stay on the roof, you do things on the roof. And I said, Delia, ya vamos a cerrar, tienes que irte. Delia, we're, we're going to close the church, you need to go. She had an old plastic Coca Cola bottle filled with water. She said, well, I'm not leaving. I said, what do you mean you're not leaving? She said, I'm going to go up on the roof and pray. And I said, yeah, I know, but it's, it's, it's 9.30. We're, I'm going to close. She goes, no, just close. I'm going to go up there and pray. That entire week of the World Cup, that woman was on that roof for seven days. She'd only come down to go to the bathroom and get more water in her Coca-Cola bottle because she said she was going to fast and she was going to pray. For churches to be planted in Peru. I want to tell you something. The whole stinking world could have been looking at that World Cup and God didn't even take a glance at it. He was looking at one little Indian woman sitting on a roof fasting for seven days that more churches would be planted in Peru. The difference between looking at that which is not real and that which is real don't you see? I don't believe that I'm a prophet and I don't believe God is speaking through me in some prophetic way. But what I am saying is true. And there is a real sense when a preacher stands before a group of people that if he is speaking a biblical thing, that it is God crying out to a people. And God loves you so much, He's crying out to you and He's saying, don't live for dirt. Don't live for that which will not prevail and pass through the judgment. Live for the kingdom.